All right, let's talk about confidence intervals for proportions today. So section 10.3. So we already discussed doing interval estimates, point estimates, which are interval estimates are also called confidence intervals. We discussed them in terms of the world of the means, but this time we want to talk about proportions, which was first introduced to you in when I introduced the central limit theorem. So if you're unfamiliar with proportions, just there's a little bit review right now, but um, if you needed more in-depth example of what the heck a proportion is and what are we talking about, what types of data, uh, then head back to when I was talking about the central limit theorem and it first introduced proportions. So in a random sample that's selected, the sample proportion is computed as follows. We let x represent the number in the sample that possesses a particular characteristic that we're looking for. One of my famous examples that I use is M&Ms. So if we're looking at the world of M&Ms, then let's say that x represents the count of red M&Ms. And n is going to equal the sample size, so let's say I, oh, excuse me, um, that I took a sample size of 1,000. Then the sample proportion, which is denoted by P hat, it looks like it's wearing a party hat, um, is a simple fraction, the part over the whole, the count of red over the total in the sample that the red was counted from. So since P hat is computed from a random sample, P hat is a random variable whose value depends on which random sample it was collected. All right, so for example, let's estimate the proportion or the point estimate of defective trans transistors in a lot containing 100,000 of them. Suppose a sample of size 800 is drawn from this lot and five transis transistors, sorry, uh, <laughs> were found to be defective. Okay, so if we take a look at this, there is a number here that is um, irrelevant, essentially. And I know that that causes a lot of confusion for students when they have numbers in a word problem and here you are as the instructor telling you you don't need them all. So this is the population size. So this is capital N. Um, so we aren't trying to calculate P, the population proportion, um, and we can't if even if we wanted to because we don't have the count out of the 100,000 that were defective, but we do have a sample of 800 where they have five that were defective. So what we can do is calculate P hat, the sample proportion, where X, the count of defective is five and little n is the sample size of the um, sample the size of the sample. So if we divide five divided by 800, and really cool, I found that our, our calculator in our guru, um, there's actually a calculator in our guru that we can use, but I can't apparently annotate and <laughs> use my calculator at the same time, but let me just take this off and then show you. So if we go over here to the calculators, Okay, they're essentially streaming in Desmos, which you can just Google. Um, I'm just going to go to this scientific calculator. You do have to double click it. And it just gives, it's really nice to have an interface where there's a quick calculator in here. And I wasn't even aware that there was a calculator in here until like last week. So five divided by 800 and we get our proportion 0 0.00625. So if we put that in percent form, that is less than 1% of defective, which sounds pretty good if I was a manufacturer. Okay, a natural question to ask is how good is the estimate of this proportion that we just calculated? And in order to answer this question, 
we would have to calculate an interval estimate because as we learned when we were discussing point estimates and interval estimates in the world of the beans is that the point estimate is not very accurate um, or it could be accurate but the problem is is we really don't know how accurate it is it doesn't come with a confidence level um, so it is our best guess when that's the only information that we have in front of us but what's better is calculating interval estimates which give us a little wiggle room and apply a confidence level so if the sample size is sufficiently large and i believe when i did the video on uh, the central limit theorem for proportions i had the np greater than or equal to five and the n times one minus p also set equal to five. And that's because it really varies from book to book and why this value varies uh, beats me. Um, but our book uses 10 as that threshold line. So we will follow what our book wants and we will set that equal to 10. So I apologize if that is confusing even in the slightest because when you first did these criteria, I did have a set equal to five. Okay, so here is our confidence interval. Recall when we were working with the means, it was X bar, the sample mean, plus or minus this critical value here, this Z that we spent some time trying to find. I either showed you, I showed you how to find it on the calculator um, by writing out the steps, and then I showed you how to find it in the table. So it's the same Z, it's from the standard normal curve, and this is sigma sub p hat, which is your standard error of proportions. Oh, and I probably should mention that after the plus or minus, this is still big capital E margin of error. This margin of error is what you're adding and subtracting to this point estimate in order to build the confidence interval. And oh, it's stated right here. E equals the critical value times the standard error. We recall the standard error formula. We were working with it as square root of P times one minus P over N, but because P is unknown, and if the population proportion P was known, then we really wouldn't have to build a confidence interval because we wouldn't have to estimate anything. We would know what it is. So um, we only need to build confidence intervals when we don't know the population parameter. And in that case, we would use our best, next best thing, which would be the sample proportion. Interval estimation of a population attribute. Okay, so the criteria that NP and N times one minus P must be greater than 10 is required to ensure that the normal distribution can be used as a good approximation to the binomial. Okay, really all we need to know is that it's, this, it's the criteria of the central limit theorem that allows us to use the standard error formula. Okay, this, this is invalid because it's from the central limit theorem if the criteria of NP and N times one minus P greater than or equal to 10, she says strictly greater than 10, whatever, um, that that requirement is held in order to make everything work. So for example, let's suppose a sample of 410 randomly selected radio listeners revealed that 48 listened to WXQI. Find a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of radio listeners that listen to this station. So the first thing we have to do is find P hat. So we have to divide 48 divided by 410 to get our P hat. But um, actually, I believe our guru will do this for us. So let's go to our guru. So over here, we go to analytics, analysis, proportion inference, one population. Okay, so if we imported the data set, then all of this great stuff would be calculated for us. But we'll type in our sample size, which is 410, and let's give that a label. So we're talking about radio listeners. And our count of success, and in this case, our success is listening to a specific radio station, WXQI. So we type in 48, 
You do not have to type in, notice it's a different shade. You see how this is a shaded box and this is a shaded box and these are both white. Um, that's because the shaded boxes will automatically fill. They're telling you they're autofill. You can type in them, but you don't have to. The label, notice that I clicked another box and this automatically calculated and I can verify that the same numbers, yay. So the success label is, I'll just write the radio station in there because that's what we're considering as success. So also notice now that I've typed the label for success, it's typed in here. Probability of uh, this label for failure, we don't have to worry about. Um, so the only other thing is make sure your confidence level is set. The default is always 95% um, and always select large sample Z. Okay, we wanna use a Z distribution. So here in our output, we can see that, well, if I could scroll, we'd be able to see, but let me just make this bigger. There we go. Uh, so we can see that they give us the percentage. So that was that P hat, but now it's in percentage form. So 11.7% of listeners in the sample listened to that specific radio station. Okay, you see that the counts and percentages are labeled radio listeners, and this is specifically radio listener, listeners of that station. Down here is our confidence interval. So here it tells us we chose 95%. This is our lower and this is our upper. So if we translate this, we'd say that we are 95% confident that the population parameter um, the population proportion of radio listeners that listen to WXQI falls within eight and a half percent and 14.8% if I change those to percents, which actually I said proportion, so I shouldn't have changed them to percents. I should have said 0 0.085, uh, if we round 0 0.086 to 0 0.148. Okay. Um, another interpretation would be that we are 95% confident that the point estimate 0 0.1171 has a margin error of 0 0.0312. Okay, remember to get the margin of error, we need to, oh, this one doesn't, let's see. Um, okay, so the easiest way in a proportions problem to get the margin of error, let's say that the question asked me to identify that, and it doesn't look like our guru gives that to us straightforward, but that's okay. So in order for us to do the margin of error quickly, remember the formula is that P hat is plus or minus this margin of error. And we know that P hat is 0 0.1107. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, point 1171. There we go. So we this is the center of this interval. So you get p hat and you add the margin of error to get that upper level. So when you add the margin of error, you get the upper. And when you subtract the margin of error, you get the lower. So if I know that p hat is in the center, exactly in the center, and the same number was added and subtracted to get these numbers, then all I have to do, let's say I'm gonna take the upper one, all I have to do is take the upper limit, so 0 0.14819, and subtract the center in order to get the, um, the margin of error. So if we come back to our scientific calculator, um, let's see, 0. 0.14819, we'll put that in here, 0. 0.14819, I think, let me go back, yep, and subtract 0. 0.1171 minus 0. 0.1171, we get 0. 0.0309, but Maybe that's because I didn't keep this exact. Here we go, 0 0.03112. So our margin of error can be found by subtracting the upper limit minus P hat. So that's good to keep in mind. That is an easy way for us to get that margin of error.
Another example, in a survey of 1,550 U.S. adults, 1,054 said that they used the social media website Facebook. Let's construct a 90% confidence interval for the population proportion of U.S. adults who use Facebook. Okay, so if I come back over here, I can go back into basic and reset, but probably should just start a new pane, a new tab, keep it nice and neat. All right, so our sample size is 1,550, and that represents U.S. adults. And our success is 1,054 that use Facebook. We want a 90% confidence interval, always a Z eyeball. Okay, so we get our lower and our upper limit, and we would state that we are 90% confident that the proportion of U.S. adults that use Facebook falls within 0.66 and 0.7 if I round. Okay, one thing that I forgot to do in the last problem and this problem prior to calculating this confidence interval is the only way to verify that this confidence interval is valid is if we pass the central limit theorem. So we need to do that n times p, in this case it's n times p hat, and we need to do n times 1 minus p hat, and our number is 10. So our uh, sample size is 1550, and our proportion is 0.68. Okay, so I'm getting it from the fact that they said the percentage of users that use Facebook is 68, which means that p hat is equal to 0.68. So if we take 68% of 1550, I'm going to tell you right now that is definitely way bigger than 10 if you put that in your calculator, and so is the complement of that. Okay, those are going to be huge numbers, but typically when you have a sample size that's bigger than a thousand, you really don't have to worry so much about passing the central limit theorem because um, that's, that's a, typically a large enough sample size for this stuff. So for the last example, we had a much smaller sample size, so let's double check this since I forgot to do it. So we are going to have n times p, so 410 times the, here we go, p hat, so 0 0.1171. So this is 11% or 12% of 400. That's not necessarily that obvious that it's going to be bigger than 10. So I'm going to put it in my calculator because I can't use the calculator and use my iPad pen at the same time. But I'm typing this 410 times 0 0.1171 and I get... 48. Well, that's definitely bigger than 10, so we're good there. And then let's do the complement of that. But if you take a look, one of these is always going to be the smaller, and the other one's going to be the larger one. So if we see this, we're taking 12% of 410. Well, the opposite of that would be 88% of 410, which is much, much bigger than 12%. So that gives me 362 if I round, which is way bigger than 10, so we're good there. Okay, I feel better now. We have checked those, that criteria, which is really important. I just forgot to do it at first. Okay, one more. So the figure below is from a survey of 800 U.S. adults, specifically aged 18 to 29. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the population proportion of these U.S. adults in this age range who get their news from television. All right, so we already have the P hat. So the P hat is given in the graphic. It wants us to focus on television. And so right here is our P hat. So our P hat is 0.27. Now the problem with this, and you know what, we'll play with it in our guru, but I'm pretty sure we need to know what the um, the count is out of 800, but let's check the parameters. So our parameter um, to pass the central limit theorem, we get 800 times 0.27.
It's a little over a quarter of 800, so I am confident that this is going to be bigger than 10. Definitely is. And the next one's even bigger because you are multiplying by the complement of 27%, which is 73% of 800. And that is definitely going to be huge. So 584. Okay. So we pass the central limit theorem because our uh, n times p and n times 1 minus p are bigger than 10. Now let's go to our guru. And let's see if we could put the point estimate in. I haven't tried that, but we can try together. So we have our sample size of 800. Let's see if I type the probability of success, 0.27. It does not let me do it. So I need to show you how to find the count of successes in order for us to use our guru very much straightforward. Okay, so to do that, you've actually already done it. Um, you would take P, N times P formula is essentially finding X. Now, how do I know that? Because P hat, remember, is X divided by N. So if we solve for X, X is equal to N times P hat. So when we multiplied 800 times 0.27 and got 216, that is X. That is the count of successes. So it's not bad because you already had to do this work anyway to pass the central limit theorem. So it makes sense that um, we would be able uh, that that our work is already done for us. So um, our this is US adults and I'm not going to bother typing in the age range. Uh, probability of success is news on TV. And we are doing a 99% confidence interval, always using Z. So now I can say that I'm 99% confident that the proportion of US adults aged 18 to 29 that get their news from television falls within 0.22957 and 0.31043. Okay. And again, let's discuss finding a minimum sample size. We talked about this in the world of the means. There was a different formula, but that should hopefully make sense that there was a different formula because we were working with X bar and sigma sub P hat. Uh, sorry, sigma sub X bar, which is standard error for the mean. So here we don't have a standard deviation. We have to use our proportion, our critical value, and our margin of error. So if an estimate of a, the population proportion is not available, then the population proportion is a, automatically set to 50%, so 0.5. The value 0.5 maximizes the quantity in the beginning of the formula, the P times Q, which is P times 1 minus P, the same thing, 1 minus P is Q, and thus provides the most conservative estimate of the sample size possible. So, for example, you are running a political campaign and wish to estimate with 95% confidence the proportion of registered voters who will vote for your candidate. Your estimate must be accurate within 3% of the true population. Okay, so let's find the minimum sample size with no preliminary estimate and with a preliminary estimate, which somehow got deleted off of here, but it's in the solution size. I believe it's 0.31. So the first one, uh, our guru again does not do minimum sample sizes as far as I know. So we would multiply, we would do this out by hand. You need to find all the pieces. So because there's no preliminary estimate, we set P hat and Q hat to 0.5. Um, because if P hat's 0.5, 1 minus 0.5 is also 0.5. So that's why P hat and Q hat are the same. We're doing a 95% confidence interval. And if you look back in the world of the means when we did this, it was the Z, the critical value is the 1.96. Again, you can refer to the previous video on the means for how to find that if you don't remember. And I said within 3%, so recall I said if it has the words within, that is absolutely identifying the margin of error. 
So here we have 1067.11. The rule of thumb for minimum sample sizes is to always round up because 0.11 of a person is needed to make this criteria happen, which means you have to round up to the next person. So with no preliminary estimate, the minimum sample size should be at least 1,068 voters. Now, if we are looking at p hat is equal to 0.13, I'm actually going to insert that into this slide so that it is where it's supposed to be. Here we go. There we go. Um, back to what we were looking at. So if we have a preliminary estimate, we know our candidate, 31% of the voters are in favor of our candidate, then again, the critical value is 1.96 because we haven't changed the confidence interval of 95% and our margin of error is 3%. So here P hat is 0.31. If you calculate one minus 0.31, you get 0.69. 1.96 is the critical value corresponding to a confidence level of 95%. Divided by the margin of error squared, we get 913.02. And yes, you still have to round up to 914 is the minimum sample size we need. And that concludes our talk on confidence intervals for proportions.